looking. John and me, um, we're going to be talking about Bruno, sorry, Vincent Bruno on Adam Green's No More News. What did you think of it, John? I thought it was very interesting. I mean, of course, you and I actually been discussing this with uh, just another Hindu for quite a while now few months and you know we've been trying to get rabbis to settle the issue about the Noah laws and uh Sheva Bene Mitzvah uh Noah the seven laws of Noah and it's just you know it's it's interesting and of course you know Vincent has a very uh, negative sort of connotation to it he tries to spin it in a negative way I guess it would be more of a proper Eng proper English way of saying it is he has a negative outlook on it and he tries to spin it in a negative way but you're you seem to be clear uh not so an enemy to know a high law as and as in much that you want to embrace it and sort of um coronify it what, what is that a word that i just no, made up no. uh, um, well i don't well I mean, the whole thing is, is I don't think people really understand the purpose of it. I keep trying to say that it's a minimum um, moral standard and, and a universal minimum. So so basically, um, as I understand it, God has divided um, humanity into Jews and Gentiles. So Jews are supposed to follow, uh, um, you know, this particular set of laws contained in the Torah and the Talmud, and Gentiles... Um, are supposed to um, have their own religion but within those parameters um, have a religion that um, doesn't offend the seven no height laws and um, I'm I'm basically saying you know fine uh, that that sounds all right to me um, you know if Jews are indeed the world's most ancient and powerful tribe and um, and, and the, the you know second and third most powerful religions are Christianity and Islam um, then surely you would you know go for that sort of thing um, unless you were Chinese, of course. I mean, I'm thinking of competing world empires who have their own um, way of doing things. So, so you know, you had a global empire of the British, and now, now it, the, the power has passed on from the British to the Americans, who are a superpower and, of course, another global empire. Um, and, and, you know, the, the next one down is, is Russia um, and China, as far as I can see. So um, Russia's already Christian, so we don't need to talk about it. And there is China. And um, so, you know, we, we have um, competing systems and it seems that China is on the rise while the West is in decline. And that explains the basis of the trade war and the um, animosity of a declining empire looking resentfully at its rival which is china in, in, in the same way that the, the british were looking over their shoulders resentfully at germany because they saw that germany was catching up with them and threatening their global empire by um you know building the berlin to baghdad railway and threatening their marine empire and and that was really the real reason why britain declared war on germany in the first world war and again on the set um you know um, in 1939. So if, if we're looking at, at it in, in geopolitical terms, we, you know, we can see the power of empires and, um, and, and why, you know, it's probably a good idea to um, work out, you know, the, the, the power of it. So um, we can say that um, the Christian empire um, brought with it the rule of law um, 
and, and it's breaking down because I guess people don't really believe in, in the basis of Christianity, which requires you to believe that um, an executed revolutionary is a co-equal of God. So because they don't believe in that, all, all the rules that they used to follow are no longer followed. While um, Islam is, is rising in a sense that people, you know, who feel they need a religion um, want to go on to the next next thing the next most powerful thing would be um islam so um and 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 then the question arises as to whether islam is no hide and and um the majority opinion seems to be um that that you know islam satisfies all the um, um requirements of the no hide law so 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 that's obviously the religion to to um yeah um that that's a clear indicator to me, though obviously a lot of people don't agree for one reason or another. I, I, I to be honest with you, just be upfront. I didn't watch the entire uh, discussion with uh, Adam and and uh, just another Hindu. Did did does do you know off the top of your head if if Adam himself is a Christian? I think he is, yeah, he, right? He's like an evangelical. Well, he keeps talking about Christianity, so um, I guess he is. He didn't say I'm a Christian, but he he does talk about. Christianity. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, we know that um, Vincent is gay, he's Hindu, and, and obviously he knows that under the no-hide laws he would be um, considered as falling you know, below its minimum standards, and he's objecting to his country, America, um, participating... So you're, so you're saying that he's just, he's, he's having a personal, uh, he's lashing out at the system that you're trying to put forth due to his personal biases. Yeah, because, I mean, he said to me before that um, he, he, he feels sympathy with the Canaanites who were um, basically displaced by the Jews who took their land because um, th their God um, helped them to kick out the Canaanites. Well, I mean, according I mean, according to the story, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve sons were all born in Israel, so they have just as much of the land as, as the Canaanites. But anyway, we're getting off topic. So, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> uh, I mean, this is interesting. So, so basically, what was your, what, if you could put in a couple of sentences, what what was the outcome of the discussion that? Uh, Vincent and, and Adam had on on the on their show. What was, was basically the conclusion that the Vatican basically adhering to no high laws now? They'll end up, you know, the new world order. The UN is inherent. I mean, he likes to say this, right? Vincent likes to talk about how his UN re resolutions putting forth the Noahide commandments. They're getting Hindus in India to subscribe to to Noahidism. So, what was the breakdown on the show like? Like what? What's the? What do you think? What do you think you got? What was the message that you think you got from it? Well, I mean, I I'm afraid, although I I was um, technically listening, I wasn't listening with any great attention because I I kind of think I know it's the same thing. Spiel, it, it's so, basically the yeah. same spiel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, it's like you know that there's one half of humanity who who think that being no hide is a universal seal of approval, and you want it. Um, but 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 Vincent, uh, you know, thinks it's um, a bad thing, and it will end up end up your religion being controlled by the Jews. But but the thing is that the Jews don't really agree on it either. So you know, the the Jews who want to curry favor with the um, idolaters would would say, oh, your your religion is is um, um, no high too. I mean, provided you you worship um, God as one, and and they're saying this to to you know idol worshiping Hindus. So, and of course, there will be Hindus who say, well, we don't want their approval anyway. And, and there will be Hindus who want the approval of Jews because they want to do business or something. So, you know, it, it's always, you know, half and half and nothing is really certain. And um, I, I'm not really so much bothered about what the Hindus do. But, but, you know, my particular agenda is that I'm promoting secular Quranism, which is a new school of Sharia. And um, I, I, I'm... And, and so I want um, secular Quranism to be considered as at the same level as um, Islam, which is based on the Quran. And um, I think the majority view, I don't know if you agree about this, is that Islam is no hide. What would I, I you say as a Jew? 
I, I think if you ask the everyday person, if you put Islam, Noahide, Judaism to the side, and you just ask the average person, what do you think about idol worship? They probably say, eh, I'm not a big fan. What about blasphemy? Yeah, yeah, I don't like that blasphemy. I don't like. I don't think you should go around cursing God. If you ask them, what about murder? Oh yeah, sure, I'm against murder. What about stealing? Oh yeah, I'm against murder. What about abusing animals? Oh yeah, sure, I'm against abusing animals. Do you think you should have courts of law to govern the human race and and to make sure people act like human beings and get punished when they get bad when they do bad things? Yeah, sure. I, I think that. So I think the average person, whether you're a Jew, Christian, Muslim gay straight white or black most people just you know flat out are noahides they, they whatever they whether or not they label themselves noahide yeah if you ask the average muslim are they against idol worship and blasphemy and murder and stealing and this and that and the other thing yeah of course i mean at the end of the day they're they're noahide in in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in the, like the basic definition of the world word of it i mean so but so are christians though so, so basically, at the end of the day, we're now we're fighting over the minutia, right? Now we have to fight over, okay, can a dead Jew revolutionary be co-equal to God? No, okay, is a she tooth? Yes, is it idol worship or idol worship? Maybe. So, does do they get punished? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Now, now that's yeah, basically yeah, but, but it. Yeah, this is so, what we, we are, but you are would really agree talking me. about. Because it's like um, most, you know, even idolaters, you know, even Hindus will will say. Yeah, we, we don't want to do these terrible things to animals. Yes, of course we should have courts of law. Um, and there should be laws against stealing, sexual immorality. And, you know, so so it, it's really the two of them that most that, that people have a problem with. So so Christians would be would, would fall into idolatry. And but they'll, they'll deny that. You, they'll, de they'll deny all, that. Yeah. All three of these groups have their own unique problems. As much as Christians are good people, they have a problem with idol worship. As much as Muslims are good people, they have a problem with throwing people off of roofs for their particular beliefs. That's actually as much as, from the Talmud, you know. Uh, throwing well, gays at, off, at off the end tall day, buildings. At the end of the day, Jews don't kill anyone. I mean, I, I, know, I, don't, I, I, mean, I know this problem. whole story. It's like we have these laws, but we don't follow them. And therefore, because we don't follow them, we're better than you. It's like, what's going on? It's yeah. really confusing. You know, it's either you have your laws and you follow them and say, I'm such a good person because I follow my laws. Not, I have these laws, I don't follow them, and therefore I'm better than you. What's, what's that all about? Well, I, I think it, the the thing is I, I think the way it works is that we have to the, the, at a negative prohibition isn't some you can override a negative prohibition with a positive pro, with a positive commandment. So I mean the the Bible teaches us to love one another and try to look for the good in each another each another and and try to find ways out of punishing people who. You know, you know what I'm saying. Try to find the way out. So, like, if you if you if you know someone did something wrong, you know, the God tells us, you know, our God tells us, you know, try to look for something that you can, you know, yeah, yeah, get them I, out. I, I understand. You, know, so, and you don't have to punish them. Okay, but yeah. I mean, the the point remains that you know it does say death to sodomites, death to idolaters. Right? I mean, this is what the Torah itself actually says. Straight out, yeah, straight out, literally, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, so, so, you know, you can say, oh, but really in practice we don't or whatever. But, you know, I'm saying that even if those people did actually do those things, um, the, the penalty is too harsh. And I think most people would agree about, well, you know, just because they're a bit gay doesn't mean you have to kill them. Um, even if they do pray to idols, you know, what's a harm? So so we have to examine the reasons for these laws. And, and it's like, um, although the um, Quran um, talks disapprovingly about idol worship, um, it doesn't say kill them. And, uh, and, and although it... it you know, there, there is a law against um, lewd acts being committed by men with each other. It doesn't say kill them, it says punish them. So, um, you know, so, so there is a, a, a qualitative difference in the nature of the disapproval and the punishment. So, you know, so we, I guess we have to ask ourselves, well, you know, what, why do Jews get punished so harshly for, for the same thing that, that um, the, the Quran itself won't punish? And, and and I think the answer must be, um, okay, this is just my, my, my own um, 
okay. heard speculation. Um, you know, probably a whole bunch of rabbis will, might not agree with me, but I'm saying, you know, because you are so few, you are just a tribe. Um, uh, you, you know, it's like you, you can't all be worshiping idols because if you did, then then you you just all you know assimilate and there'll there'd be no Jews left. You know, and if you you know, if, if Sodom, Sodom were allowed, then, then you, you'd all, um, well, mostly become Sodomites and not have children, and then there'd be, you know, um, demographic implications for, for Jews. So I guess, you know, the, the restriction has to be stricter because you, you are um, a smaller group and, you know, can't afford to lose your numbers. You know, I'm just, you know, suggesting this as a reason. But anyway, it is, um, you know, to be punished as far as God's concerned. It is I mean, at the end of the day, like I was trying to say, you know, we all we, all our groups have positive and negatives. I mean, you can look at the Hindu and say, you know, how they take care of animals and the planet is noble of them. I mean, they tend to be environmentalists. They tend to be pro-animal. They love animals. They tend to be vegan, right? Uh, most Hindus are vegan as far as I know. I mean, that's some, that's commendable to say, yeah, do they have a problem with worshipping chachkas, you know, false god idols? Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, do Jews have their faults and their and their problems? Yeah, sure. But also Jews do a lot of work with charity and, and, and loving other people. I mean, Israel for, you know, people like, you know, Vincent like to get on Israel all the time. But at the end of the day, the, the nation of Israel does a lot of humanitarian humanitarian aid. I mean, whenever there's a forest fire or whenever there's a you know, tsunami yeah, uh, that wipes uh, uh, out a village. They're the first ones on the scene. They're the first ones in Asia fighting the coronavirus. I mean, they're out there trying to work on healing the planet. So, yeah, so yeah, we all have our faults, but we do positive things too. I'm not actually criticizing any particular group. I'm, I'm really more examining the no, different, I get, I get what different religions and their, their, their you know, closeness or, or, or um, but it just seems distance like you don't from, want to the, from this universal just, moral standard that's a no hide laws which is it just seems like you don't want to admit that muslims don't have their act together as well i'm, I'm not i i'd be the first to admit that the, the, they don't have I, i'm not i mean again i i actually don't want to talk about the behavior of indig you know muslims or jews or whatever i'm talking about the purpose of the no hide laws which is to set a minimum moral standard so if you can just imagine it as a line that that you know that so you, you, can so you would above... agree then would you agree with my opening premise i don't mean to cut you off but i don't want to go off on a tangent i mean so you believe in my opening premise that mo the everyday person already is a no hide the average american the average european the average asian the average muslim the average christian they're already no hide no, I don't admit that at all. If you ask the average, average person... No, but they, you, who cares you know, what they murder, think? Yeah. They don't know anything. They don't care about idolatry. They're not bothered about blasphemy. You know, it's like we're talking about learned opinion here, about whether something is or isn't something, you know. You, you, there's no point asking some ordinary Hindu or whatever. You know, it's like idolatry? Well, then what's, what, what the hell is wrong with that? I don't care, you know. You know, we don't we don't want to talk about we don't want to talk to people like that. We're talking about why the prohibitions are there in the first place, and and why it should be forbidden. Well, well I, I mean, mean I'm not even I mean, talking about the... outlawed. I mean, so so Judaism, Christianity, Islam already outlaws homosexuality, already outlaws idol worship, they outlaw blasphemy. I mean. Don't sacrifice animals to false gods. That's in, that's in the New Testament. I mean, so I mean, what what exactly is it? Just, just the belief in Jesus Christ is the issue, and then, and then with Islam, it would be their their strict, you know, you know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, well, I, I'm what trying exactly to explain. The issue? I'm trying to explain what the problem is, and um, well, say what you want to say, and you know. From an academic point of view. I'm talking academic... from an academic point of view, which is why I don't care what these ordinary people say. Ooh, I think I'm no hide because I think I'm a decent person. I'm not talking about people like that. I'm trying to talk about the minimum moral standard that 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 you know, and what the point of of the no hide laws are, and it, it is to judge the you know your 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 proximity to the. To that standard of your your religion, and that's what I want to talk about. 
So, so my, I mean, my mind makes it pretty, pretty clear then. I mean, Noahide, uh, the Muslims and Christians are Noahides. Does he I say mean, Maimonides, Maimonides writes that Hashem uh, allowed Christianity and Islam to flourish to give Torah to the non-Jew. That's his. That's not his. That's not the halakha, but that's his personal opinion that he gives. So, I mean, it's just his personal opinion. And then most rabbis hold to that. Most, I mean, if you ask the average rabbi, they'll ask you, "Yeah, God gave the world uh, Christianity, and Islam to promote Torah." Okay, but but I mean, uh, we can't be logical about it, can't we? I mean, I mean, it's it's, it's very simple. Most people who think that they're, they're decent people will be okay with the five Noahide laws, right? We're just talking really about idolatry and blasphemy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, I, give, I give you that, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and this is really, you know, what, what I want to discuss, you know, because it, it, it has implications for Christianity and it has implications for Islam. And then, you know, we, we can talk about why these prohibitions exist. And I was going to say that, you know, if Jews had been allowed to be idolaters when they worshipped the golden calf and, 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 you know, Moses came down from the mountain and said, oh, you're, you're just playing, carry on, carry on, carry on worshipping your golden calf. Now, what do you think would have happened? So, so no that was Jews, because they right? I mean, I, you, you may or may not care, but I assume you would because well, you're God a Jew. Said himself, I, mean, God, I mean, God said himself that he was going to exterminate the Jewish people because of the worship of golden calf. Exactly. It was mo so, so how did they, so how did they get it? So can I make my point? But, how, so, but if you read the story, if you read the story, Moses intervenes on them and says exactly what you said, that why are you going to destroy them from their idol worship? Just forgive them and move on. Just pretend like it didn't happen. So in a way... Yeah, they worshipped their idols and they got away with it. <laughs> Maybe just temporarily, but they did kind of got away with it. Okay, but but the point is that God disapproves. It says, "You shall." I am a jealous God. You shall know what worship other gods, and and it's in the Ten Commandments, and it's repeated in in the Noahide laws, and 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 you're saying, "Oh, it's cool. It doesn't matter. It's all right." Is that what you're saying as a Jew? I think I think I can't. I can't carry out swift justice. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I mean, but can, like, can we at least acknowledge what the rules are? Can we just acknowledge what the rules are? Can we just acknowledge what the rules are, even if we break the, them? Well, so the rule is so the rule is if there's idols, statues, then you have to destroy them. Like if I if I see like technically speaking, if I see like a cross or a statue of the Virgin Mary or something like that, or or a picture of Muhammad, like I'm technically supposed to destroy it. Like I'm supposed to completely destroy it. Like I'm not supposed to technically kill someone who believes in it. I have to take that person to a court and then they, they're condemned by a court. But yes, at a personal level, what do I do about it? From what does God want me to do is destroy idols. So if I see an idol, I'm supposed to destroy it. That's my personal responsibility as a Jew. Okay. Where, where does it say that? Does it say that in the Talmud? Uh, no, that's a straight tour. Hold on a second. I, let me do a quick Google search about um, where does it say to destroy idols? How's that? Let's see if it finds something. No, I, Deuteronomy, I, I, I Deuteronomy 12.3. It says, Deuteronomy 12.3 says, break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, burn their Asherah poles of in fire, cut down the idols idols of their God, wipe out their names from all these places. So God tells us from his own lips that, yeah, we got to destroy everything. All Everything pagan has to be destroyed completely from this earth. That's wow. my responsibility. Okay. So, um, so you have a very strong injunction against idol worship, right? And, and, and it's probably your, the you idol. Know, what you were chosen I, I, for to do. And, and, you know, whether people like it or not, you know, it is it, it's, it's what it says. Yes. The, the job of the Jew is should it should promote. Well, this is my pro I mean, nowadays it's to, to promote Noahidism. But in a biblical from a biblical perspective, the job of a Jew is is to spread to spread Judaism, monotheism. So, yeah, it would be to, to tell people that their God is false. So that would be the mission of the Jew, like Avraham did. Avraham went everywhere and taught people oneness of God. So that would be that carries on with Moses and that carries on with me. Okay, what what um 
what um, verse what, do, in Deuteronomy? What, what was it again? I, I I didn't quite catch that. Which verse uh, the, were you the reading from? Paganism. Uh, Deuteronomy twelve verse three. Okay. Uh, I mean, it basically says destroy everything pagan. So, yeah, I, I, I wasn't aware um, of how strong it was. Um, I, I just um, need to... these are the these are the degree that's uh, starting from chapter twelve. These are the decrees and laws that you must carefully follow in the land of the Lord. So I guess maybe technically this is only for Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, the God of your ancestors the, the, has given you possession. As long as you live in the land, destroy completely the places on the high mountains, on the hills, every underneath every tree, where the nations that you are dispersing worship their gods, break their altars, smash their stones. So, base, I mean, basically, it's saying you know you got to exterminate. I mean, it's pretty rough, but I mean, at the end of the day, Israel has to destroy paganism. That's it's 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 a you know mm -hmm. it's bad. Okay, so so I I think um I think even the um, um I suppose you you call them um, um religious fun fundamentalists in Israel who are going around um, burning churches, right? The the, the 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 they'll probably if you ask them why they're doing this, they'll be referring to this verse, chapter. It doesn't happen often. I mean, it doesn't happen happen often though. I think the last time a, a Jew committed like some sort of you know i would i, I would consider it a hate crime i oh, mean oh, yeah yeah it, it i understand and, and of course you know, property damage but, but we're just talking about what what it, it actually says in the torah which is that that jews are commanded in the land of israel um to do what what you just said you must destroy all the places where they worship, worship their God, God side on the yeah, I, have, side I mean, the I would have to do research. I mean, I would have to do research on what that verse actually means because I'm, you know, a kosher perspective is that the written Torah needs to be learned with the oral um, Torah. So you can't just take a verse, uh, you know, that's what Christians do. But just on the plain text, the meaning, yeah, it seems like within, land, within Israel, the borders of Israel, you have to pretty much exterminate anything that's non-Jewish in in the land. Yeah, I mm. mean that's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah, and and, and also that, that that was what um, Vincent was having such a problem with because he was saying, um, oh, they're going to cut off our heads, you know, if, if we're idolaters. And, yeah, that and, I don't I, understand about that. Yeah, he does. I don't think Vincent understands that a Jew has no jurisdiction in India and Pakistan and Iran. I think he gets it, but he, he just wants to get, you know, people all worked up. But, and so I was saying to right. him that, that this requirement, um, this law that, 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 that says Jews are to be, to um, execute idolaters, which I think is, is generally agreed, um, only applies to Israel, Gentiles living in Israel. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so, as so, far as I know. Yeah, as far yeah as I, know. I mean, of course, you know, unless, unless, you know, Jews, you know, have a world empire and want to invade everywhere and destroy, you know, all, all the altars and, you know, pagan temples of, of everyone else. But, but, but even then, the borders of Israel are defined in the Torah, so it can't go beyond the area of Greater Israel. So, and, and, and the Greater Israel is, is Arab and therefore Muslim anyway, and they, they don't worship, um, um, idols either but so so really you know what what Vin Vincent is complaining about would only uh, you know uh, pertain to the um, land of of Israel itself and it, it wouldn't yep. you know and of course Jews could you know wouldn't have the ability anyway to um, go you know go to places outside and and, and destroy other people's um, um, idols and and also they, they they are in fact forbidden to do so because the borders of Israel are you know defined but so they can't go beyond that so um, even if people you know pagans outside Israel are worried they, they you know think well well actually they're not supposed to and I guess if they they break the the laws then bad things will happen to them too and presumably you know it's it's a big job you know if if they want to go around um, destroying everybody else's. Um, um, idols ev everywhere else. 
So sure, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a big job, and 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 you know, and and basically, my whole pr premise was to to say, well, if you want to know how it dies the world, if you think it's your 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 job as Jews. Um, to shine your light on to, to nations in this way, you you can only outsource. You can only outsource that job to to Muslims, because right. So, so yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Vincent is blaming the Jewish people for things that the Gentiles are them doing themselves, right? I mean, the the UN and the Vatican and and these Indian people, they themselves are are ascribing themselves to the Noah law and then they're getting some token Jew some rabbi to go along with it and say hey look you know we got a approval of a rabbi thumbs up and then they get a photo shoot and then you know Vincent's over here saying oh look at these Jews they're pushing Judaism on, on the non-Jew and then they're going to start executing Christians in the street I mean it just doesn't it, at the end of the day you would like what you were just saying we believe as Jews we, we hope and we pray actually every day matter of fact that the non-Jew comes to know Hashem, and and that they themselves would embrace a basic line of morality. So it's something that they are Im implementing on. That's 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 it. We're we're not saying that we're gonna be like you know Chabad and we're gonna build a Chabad house in every corner, and then the rabbi is gonna be the shliach and he's gonna it's gonna you know have neighborhood watch. And if you if you sneak in a, a statue of Vishnu, we're gonna just we're just gonna you know pull you out of your car like a Detroit cop and just whack you right there. I mean, that's not, that's, I mean, that's just crazy. That's just crazy talk. I mean, no, we're, we're hoping that you, yes, the non-Jew will subscribe to Noahidism that, yeah. And, and then now you're saying, okay, maybe Islam is the best to subscribe to that, to, to take on that job. I mean, they're doing a good job in England. I mean, I mean, they, they're cleaning up. The, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I, I'm not a big, I'm not a bit. I'm not big against the the. I'm I'm not a. Uh, I'm not one of these people that don't like the no go zones. Let me just put it that way. I, I think that the fact that you know, that you know these Muslims are having these neighborhood watches, like I was describing, and they're you know checking to see if the people are drinking and prostituting and gambling, and I mean, yeah, in a way, you know, of course, someone's gonna find a way to blame us, right? The Jew, oh, they let the Muslims in, and you know, whatever, but. You know that's something that you're doing, right? That's that's something the Muslim is doing, right? So that's what we would hope for, in best case scenario, that you would police yourself, that you would you would you would look out after the community, not us, because we should theoretically all the Jews should live in Israel, and that there should be no Jew in in in, in um, France and England, no Jew in America, right? This is the best case scenario. All Jews are in Israel. All their all the all the non Jews are where they're supposed to be in the world and that's it. And they're doing the Noahide thing and we're doing the Jew thing. Mm -hmm. Which and that's it. Yeah. That's the best case scenario. Right? What whether or not, you know, um you believe in the Messiah, whether you believe in heaven, an afterlife, whatever, that's optional things to believe. So you have the basic Noahide laws and then that's it. That would that would be get best case scenario. Okay, I, I mean, I, I suppose your 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 population is divided half. Um, it's like half the Jews are in in, uh, in America and the other half are in Israel. Well, even they would have believed. Even the non-Jew, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the secular Jew, the atheist Jew, they will tell you, oh yeah, of course, biblically speaking, the Bible says all the Jews will go home, and all the Jews will be in Israel. That that's a biblical belief mm -hmm. that. You will, you will be redeemed. That the Jews will be redeemed. Most people think that the Mashiach will do this, the Messiah, and they will bring us home to Israel, and then the temple will be built, and then we'll have sacrifices again, and that's it. No more conversions. The door is locked. There's no one getting in, and that's it. That's that's the messianic age, right? And then when we when we're bad, and when when the Jews mess up, and the, then the cycle repeats again. The, the goyim will come. To take over our country, destroy our temple, and then we're scattered, and then the process will be repeated. Then when we're redeemed, we'll come back, yada, so forth and so forth, like we, what happened in Egypt with Moses, and then and then eventually Joshua brings us in, and then and then it repeats again, and then the um, Persians and the Greeks expelled us, and then the, and then the cycle happens again with the Romans. So that would be the way it goes. Right. Okay, I've got a message from. Um, 
Vincent, he says, Claire, you know you are lying. No hides are to implement no hide outside of Israel. Um, I, I, I don't disagree with that. And you are misrepresenting my position. I didn't say Jews would rip non-Jews out of cars. Um, I didn't say that. Um, that know. was just me being funny. I wasn't. I, I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're portrayed to think, right? The hysterity around Noahide laws is that we're just going to start just just clamping down hardcore and just start killing people. That's just hysteria. That's just crazy. That's just crazy to think that people are going to be executed for idol worship. Yeah. So, well, I, I think we're, we're reasonably clear about that, that, you know, Vincent's um, agenda is to be alarmist, to alert people to the fact that, you know, Jews could do this um, if they had their way. But, but you know, currently, the, the um, Jews are not even thinking of... Um, I mean, OK, for, for, for the scenario that Vincent is afraid of to actually happen, whereby um, Gentiles would be executed for sodomy and idolatry, um, Israel would first have to be a theocracy, and um, that, that is far away. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, unless you're, unless you're a messianic, I mean, you think, you know, the, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I speak to a lot of Jews on my channel. I do interviews and discussions and a lot of people seem to say that, you know, with everything that's happening, the, you know, maybe the, maybe the Messiah is here, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I don't know. I'm not a prophet. I can't speak on those matters, but most people do seem like, theocracy is imminent that that the end that we are living in a time where um i don't know you okay, know you're, maybe you're maybe judaism you live in a messianic age and and you know it, it could happen imminently but i mean you know it looked at objectively there are no signs currently of any movement in israel um talking about becoming a theocracy is, is there are there any people who are saying that in israel Ah uh, yeah, sure. I have a, I, I, I did a show with my friend Sam, and he's saying that that's the, that's what he, I mean. He lives in Israel, and that's what he see, That's what people think that it's it's a growing concern that Israel is uh, heading that that in that direction. I don't know. Are there any I political parties whose agenda is is actually states that they want Israel to be a theocracy? Maybe I need to look that up. No, nah, there, there there are parties, but they ha they they're not popular. And it, okay, okay, so there are parties. Israel Theocracy Political Party. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, you know, the, the only way that would happen, the, the, the scenario that Vincent fears might happen, would be if, if Israel became a theocracy, and therefore if you're a Gentile living in Israel and you're caught, um, you know, being idol, um, worshipping idols or committing sodomy, then uh, I guess they, they, they would technically execute you you know if, if the law were revived again so i, I would like that i mean i would love that uh, israel was you know under biblical law but i mean at the end of the day you know we have i mean israel does have agreements with with the christians not to proselytize like technically speaking in israel is illegal to proselytize christianity people still do it and they get punished for it but for the most part you know christian christian churches still operate and you know, Orthodox Christianity is very popular in Israel, and and of course you have the the church where you know the, you know where Jesus was born, and then the baptized, and John the Baptist. I mean, you do have tourist attractions. I think they mostly keep that around just because it makes so much money. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, that's what I hope for. I mean, I pray every day during the during morning prayer shakri that I I pray that you know. Israel will be really uh, reestablished. I mean, technically speaking, speaking, Israel, this secular nation, isn't biblical Israel. It's a, it's a secular nation. It's not a, it's not actual Israel. It, it, just because it's called Israel doesn't mean it's Israel, right? Um, no, it, it, it's Aretz Israel. Israel means a land of Israel, and it means Greater Israel, right? Which is quite a large chunk of territory. Yeah, right. At the, at, okay, yes. The, you're talking about from Nile to Euphrates. Yes, the, the borders of, of the prophesied land of Israel. But technically speaking, just the land where the, tw the 12 tribes settled 
it's it's pretty much the say it pretty much is what it is. I mean, you would have some part of Jordan on the on the on the other side of the Jordan River. You would have some land there. But yeah, what you're talking about is the 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 greater Israel. That would be um, when the Messiah comes. That would be established when when the when the king is ruling over the land. But that that that, that you you can have that. And what I'm saying is. You don't necessarily need that. You you could have the pre. You could just have the borders that it is now, and be a theocracy without. Oh a yeah, yeah, yeah. You you certainly could, and 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 you know, I'm just just suggesting that you know it. You know, maybe the whole idea of the bargain is, is that you know you become a theocracy, and then you will find yourself getting bigger and bigger and becoming you know the thing that you were meant to be, as um, described yeah. in, in in the Torah. So I, I guess if you you are you know religiously inclined, you you would think that and 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 want it and but but then you know you you'd have to do it and i i'm looking at um uh, the wikipedia entry of the national religious party and um it doesn't seem to be doing much at the moment and i think it's uh kind of finished now so it, well, yeah, it, like it was said. dissolved in 2008 so um and, and it, it's it's a religious zionist movement so um, I, there I don't are see anything else coming up. Yeah, like I said, there are political parties, but they're a joke. I mean, they're not necessarily uh, popular. But like I would, from what I from what I've been told, yeah, like like people think that, like they, like like <laughs> you know, we're, that they're gonna oh, somehow uh, somehow BB is gonna have a change of heart. Like that's what people think. Like oh, BB is secretly, you know, he pretends to be secular. And but he's really deeply religious, and I, you know, I don't know, I I can't verify these, but this is what they think. I you, you talk to you're talking to my friend Sam, you know, and you would think, you know, tomorrow, you know, we're going to be having a uh, theocracy. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, I'm saying, you know, you are so far away from it because you know it's it's kind of you know if there was such a movement and it's gaining power, then I guess. I would expect to read about it and have heard of it already, right. and and you know I fear I hear nothing except you know oh it's a few minor people, um few religious fanatics committing um you know criminal damage on churches and things. So you know I, I'm just saying you know it's very far from the case. But but talking about idolatry again, you know I I kind of think it it's important to um, understand how how much um, this prohibition. I mean, it's basically a Jewish idea. Um, the prohibition against idolatry, you know, um, stemming back to uh, Mosaic times, and and he's saying, you know, you of all people, you can't do that. Um, you know, the, the goyim can worship idols. Um, you know, it, it's but but you know we can't because we have you know the blah blah blah. You know, we have to remain in existence and be light unto the nations um, in order to civilize the world. I guess that that would be the um, the the. I guess the noble ideal of of being Jewish, or not. Mm. I, I mean, but but you know, just because you you know you claim to be God's chosen people, and, and presumably you were chosen for a reason, and and the reason seems to be to um, see to it that you know to set a standard so other people, even if you don't enforce it yourselves, or if you can't, um, people will just sort of know it's there and, and do a kind of tick list, like, oh, um, is my country, um, does my country have a court and legal system? Does my country have laws against, mer you know, homicide? Well, does my country have laws against, you know, blah, blah. And then, then you know, and, and always, I guess, it will be the, the two... Um, um, prohibitions about idolatry and blasphemy, and I'm saying, you know, even if if um, Jews don't think that Islam is quite good enough, um, it is the closest thing to it, and and that's why I was talking about, you know, how you know whether you're over the line or under the line or on the line. Um, the the point is that when you have a standard, you can talk about, you know, people falling above, you know below it or being on it or, or you know, uh, more than satisfying the minimum requirements, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. What, what do you mean by, uh, do you think Islam is, is better at being a Noahide than, than Noahide is, is Noahidism is as good at being Noahidism? Is that what, was what I got from that? Yeah, because uh, what I'm saying is that 
um, you know, according to Jews, you know, um, okay, the Chabad rabbis are saying even Islam is not no hide enough because you know they they make up some lie about, um, um, you know, these these Muslims say they really worship the Kaaba or or you know some some you know minor thing like that. But basically, you know, even if Islam falls below um, the requirements of of the no hide laws, it's still the closest thing to it. Well, um, Christianity is is actually a very strange creature, but but I think um, the invention of, of the idea of Shituf was was really because um, Jews wanted to do business with Christians, and it's all about um, taking oaths in court, and they thought it would just be better if if Jews and Christians could do business together, and and so they said, oh, you know, Trinitarianism is okay for Trinitarians. Or something, you know, vague like that. But but really, of course, they they shouldn't have done it. Th this is my point. But I guess they got tired. You know, they were settled in Europe. They were, um, you know, doing business. They, you know, they'd been there for generations, and they didn't fancy upsetting Christians or depriving themselves of living in Christian countries by 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 you know telling their host nation that their religion is is. Um, um, you know, blasphemy and idolatry. So I guess they, they diluted their principles and said, oh, you know, it, it, it's okay. Um, um, Christians are no heights too. And, and, um, and, and this was in the 1500s, I think. So, you know, I'm saying they never should have said that, but I understand why they did. You know, it's like, well, you know, what's going to happen if we do a bit of business with them? We'll, 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 we'll just, you know, make lots of money and wouldn't that be nice? And, you know, um, but but uh, and, and you know in our our times of identitarianism, you know it seems to me that a lot of people are kind of going crazy because they don't have an identity anymore, um, and and a lot of white people who don't have any religion um, seems to seem to define themselves in their hatred of Jews and hatred of Muslims and you know whatever because they they don't have some anything positive to. To do it, you know, to to adhere to, so so they can only um, go on their rage and their emotions, and, and and that is, you know, hatred of Jews, Muslims, other races, you know, whatever, and um, and I think you know that is a problem that that e even though we we can't, ex you know, immediately understand that that having a a, a, a self image that is attractive and appealing. Uh, matters that much. It, it's all obviously causing a lot of mental illness in a lot of people. Yeah, and, which is um, maybe maybe was that why you converted to to Judaism from from your Catholicism? Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear the first part of that sentence. Why did I convert? Because you 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 didn't like Christianity for for you know how ineffective it was at. You know, keeping you on the straight and narrow. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm speculating. I, I you know, uh, I, we have spoken to it bef about it before, and and obviously Christianity was 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 not doing the job for you, and that's why you converted to Judaism. Judaism. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't go by this prescription of how to live your life as what Judaism says. I mean, if one reads the Bible, you would come to the conclusion that God wants you to live your life a certain way. And then when you read the New Testament, it says, uh, you know, all you have to do is believe that God became a man, died on the cross, went to hell for three days, and that was all f to forgive you of your sins. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's not what God himself prescribes. So I became, a, I left Christianity simply for the fact that I wanted to be actually believing in what I was supposed to be believing in, right? I, I'm a Christian, and I say I believe in this Bible, and then I'm doing all this other stuff. And like, wh wh where, what's going on here? Like, there's, a, there's something wrong. So once I learned, wait a minute, and I was, I and mind you, I was raised to be Jew hater. You know, I was, I was raised to be anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. I was raised to believe that Jews were Christ killers, and and. They're blind and, and they're they're evil people and stuff. And like once I realized that I was lied to and that my religion was BS, it was no other answer. I mean I, I mean I became a Noahide for a little bit actually. I um because I was I was also <laughs> again you know, just as much as I was lied to by, by Catholicism, I was also lied to by Judaism in a way. 
because the Jewish people also told me that, well, you know, just because you, you know, you, you think Hashem is the one true God doesn't mean you have to become a Jew. And I was like, oh, really? I can just believe in the Bible without being Jewish? And yeah, sure, why not? Now, I come to learn with my studies over the years that that's absolute rubbish, I mean, to use a British term, absolute rubbish. And um, it's bloody rubbish, and it absolutely belongs in the trash that line of thinking. God doesn't, dem that God doesn't really, yes, are there two categories of people, Jew and Gentile? Yes. But at the end of the day, God wants us to be Jewish, and God wants us to prescribe through the way that he wants us to live. That's it. So if you don't know that, right, if you're living in the middle of, uh, you know, Alaska and you never heard of Hashem, then, yeah, there's a minimum, by, a minimum standard to live by, right? Be a decent, decent, decent person. But once you come to know Hashem is God, then it behooves you to believe in him completely. That would be my argument. And that's what I think that Torah teaches. I don't think Torah teaches us that, that once you know Hashem is your God, Oh, okay, I don't have to believe anyway. No, that's that's nonsense. God says to believe if you believe. Could you tell us why you felt that being no hide was, was not enough and what what made you take the extra step into converting to uh, to, to Judaism? So it's simple. Nowhere in the Bible, the Torah, I mean when I say Bible, that nowhere in the Torah does does God say or hint to that it's okay to just do the min minimum standard of, of Noahidism. God tells us repeatedly over and over again to do something. Just like that passage I read to you about smashing their idols, God tells us over and over and to do an action, to do something. And God says, keep kosher, eat clean animals. He says, keep Shabbos my holy day. He says, do these things and, you, and I will love you. So Noahides don't eat kosher. Noahides don't keep Shabbos. No eyes don't do a lot of things. They're they're right like Vincent makes fun of them. They're no ahides. Uh they're all about the no. There's no yes. And when it comes to God, there's a lot of yes. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of no, but there's more yes than there is no. So where's all the yes part of it? That's what I was questioning. And when I was pushing the rabbis, when I was a no high, wait, what about? Hey, you're telling me just be a gentile and believe in Torah, but I'm not doing anything that God is prescribing me to do. And there's, and they couldn't give me an answer to that. They couldn't give me an answer. So that's when I decided, yeah, I'm being lied to just as much as I was lied to as Christianity, and I should become an Israelite. I, be, I should become Jewish because that's what God is prescribing for me. So c could you tell us a little bit about um, the, the religious practices that you followed as a Noahide? And, and how long were you a Noahide? You know what? This is actually the sad thing about it. This is a great point. There is no religion in, in Noahidism. There, it's secular. It's it's like there's no godly pr activities. There's, it, you would think uh, everyone in the Noahide community are atheists. I mean, the only reason that, that you wouldn't think that is because they're studying the Bible. But other than studying the Bible, there's no real god or holy or there's nothing holy. There's nothing godly. There's no, you know, they don't pray. They don't like candles. They don't do anything. There's nothing. There's no religion. There's no. There's no connection to God. So, so that's what was sad. It? So when I was a Noahide, I was like, I want a connection to my Creator. I want to be religious, and there was no religion. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, did you have a place of worship? I mean, I'm just trying to imagine what being a Noahide would Zip. be like. So, so you, it you, you don't even have a, you know, you don't even have your own community that regularly meets in a. A, a place of worship? You, you don't have that at all? Noahides, let's put it this way, Noahides are basically non-believers, like atheists or agnostics, but the only thing they do different than an agnostic is they believe in, in God. That's it. They, they don't they don't they don't pray they don't they don't do anything religious they don't do nothing holy they just don't they just don't murder people and they just don't rape people and they just don't worship idols. Whip the whip de doo I mean, it's really nothing more. They literally, these Noahides don't do anything. And that, and it's so boring. I used to run groups with Noahides, and we and used to come every once a week on Thursdays, and we would come to read the Bible, and that was it. We would read the Bible, read what it says, and that was it. That was the end of the discussion. There was no, well, what did you do today? Oh, I just uh, played Xbox. So what did you do today? I went to work. It was, it's like, there's nothing. No there's, there's actually nothing. There's no community. There's no 
activities. There's there's nothing happening. Like you ask a Muslim, what did he do today? He says, wow, I had a beautiful religious experience. You ask a Christian, oh, I had a beautiful religious experience. You ask an Ohio, uh, like like nothing. Okay. What did you explore becoming Muslim while while you were rejecting your um, Catholicism? I well, so I used to do this these group chats in stick cam. They used to be like these rooms, like here and hang out. Mm-hmm. And they and the only difference is they used to be open twenty four seven. They would never close. So once you made a room, it would be permanently open. And it was a Muslim room called like. Uh, I think it's called Muslim Talk. That's what it was called, and it was run by some a Muslim from Saudi Arabia, and he spoke English. And people would come in and ask questions, and I would go in there and I would ask questions, and it was just like you know, I mean, I didn't, you know, the the, the answers I would get would be well, you know, the Quran was the final message from God, or you know, the other religions got it wrong, and you know, it's yeah, you know, okay, I mean demonstrated for me and then when you 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 could they didn't really they couldn't really give me again they were just regular people so i mean maybe i'm asking the wrong people the wrong questions but I, it seemed like only judaism was giving me the answers i was looking for to be honest i did but to answer you your question community. but yeah i was looking it gave you a community didn't didn't it is that the the, the real difference between your 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 life as a catholic and or, or you know your pre-jew life is is that you 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 now have a community to be part of? Is is that? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm with a community. I actually have a, a rituals that I as, ascribe to. It makes my life better. I'm more clairvoyant. I, I I'm 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 I used to feel like I was always lost, that I had no direction, that I was, I, you know, I felt like mentally ill, like when I was a non Jew. I felt like I was just like. You know, delusional and just out of control and like loss and like now that I'm a Jew I feel like I'm I'm like you know I don't have centered. like I'm centered yeah that's a great way to put it centered hmm. yeah and, and I'm but saying I, I, carry on no I was just saying that maybe you get that I mean maybe people get that with Islam maybe people get that with other religions at the end of the day that's what I I hope and pray for you know like I want everyone to be happy, and I think that Noahide Islam isn't something that's going to give you happiness. Yeah, maybe temporarily, like, you know, once you get out of your stupor of Christianity that you've been worshipping idols your whole life, yeah, okay, maybe that. And Islam can so- solve that problem, too, because Islam has a strong um, uh, a strong desire to rid the world with idol worship as well. Well, you it know, also so- has people there that you can join, a can you know your Muslim community at your your mosque you know that there is a place where you can go where you might get to know other people of that religion which yeah, I guess like, is, is, is like-minded you know, people hmm? yeah yeah it's good yeah yeah because you know basically a, a religion is meaningless if if you can't be with other people or you know who call themselves you know adherents of that religion right I mean because that's the only way you can um, reinforce your your religious identity is is to be with other people who who share that identity. Yeah, um, it, that's like the most thing. You, you're not going to get that with Noahidism. Like everything about Noahidism is online. Once a year, the Noahides will have a conference in Texas where they get together and, and they chat in like a like a big community. Of- all like like thousands of them come by and and texas is actually how a home to like the largest noahide community so for some reason texas and canada are the two <laughs> biggest populations of noahides mm-hmm. um and and they and noahides tend to be ex-catholic so ex-catholics and texans that's a great combination <laughs> so, so, so have, have you did you go you, you must have been to one of the meetings perhaps you'll tell us what your your experience there Oh, I, I, I didn't bother to go to a meeting. I, I, not that I would want to go. Right. I never. No, I didn't want. I didn't want to go. But um, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, um, if the only way you're going to grow, because a lot of Noahides end up becoming either Jewish or atheist. So, it's just the writing of the wall. The, the, the writing on the wall is there's no real. 
answer to Noahidism. It's it's a false. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a um, it's, it's a failed it experiment. It's spiritually empty because because it's, it's, a, it's spiritually it, empty. It's a it's a, it's a failed movement. Chabad was wrong. Um, they should have they should be pushing Judaism. That's what that's what Abraham did. That's what Moses did. Don't don't give people an option of of Noahide laws, and then and then and then leave them out to dry. That's basically what these Jews do. They tell you to choose Noahidism, and then when you want something, they they tell you to go get lost. They, 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 it's not like the it's not like these rabbis help build Noahide communities. They could care less. They they rather build a Jewish community. So why don't you, mm -hmm. as a non-Jew looking for answers, either choose Judaism or go to Islam, or stay a Christian because you're 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 going to end up being an atheist, and that's probably the worst thing of all those options. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, it, it's so important really to to feel that your rituals are are ancient, and and I think you know that that's one of the things that that are, that's so important about religion that people don't actually think about it. Um, I, I I once went to an SSPX um, mask um, conducted by Bishop Williamson, and and it's like I kind of see why you know that that a priest outside you know his surroundings of a a stone building that is a church it's it's like well he's nothing at all you know you, you know particularly when he's you're holding a service in some community hall with stack up chairs and um <laughs> you know nothing nice to look at except you know it's like then all the mystery is gone and, and then all, all you know is is that it's a very long service you know, mm. and, and and I guess you know. Then you, you suddenly realize why why places of religious worship are, are you know have to be beautiful buildings. And and um, how you feel when when it's not when it's obviously not a beautiful building. Yeah, mm. yeah. Religion gives us a lot of you know. Say what you want about the Christians. I mean, some of the most beautiful. You know, just look at the Renaissance period. Look at Venice. Look at Italy. Yeah, well, well Chinese whole... tourists love coming to Europe and taking photographs of your, you know, of beautiful, you know, churches and cathedrals. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really know what the answer is. I don't know what will save Europe. I mean, to be honest with you, um, it's not going to, you know... You didn't expect that all Europeans to, uh, I mean, to become Muslim. I, I think that's a tall order. I mean, no, but I, you know. see, I, I don't even expect them to do that. It, it's sort of like you know, it, it's like oh, I, I, I'm just trying to think of a good enough analogy. It's like, you know, maybe you're settled into your your home that, with a leaky roof and rising damp, and it's all you know, stinky carpets and, uh, you know, and and maybe the, the kind of, you know, vermin or, it's like, yeah, it's really horrible, but you still maybe want to stay there because you don't want to move, you know, that kind of thing. And then, then suddenly it's condemned, yeah. it's condemned, it's going to be demolished. And then you'll be screaming, but I don't want to, you know, my home, you know, my ancestors who've been living in this building for generations, blah, blah. And, and, and then, you know, eventually the demolition people come and, you know, break it down and you, you'll have to move because it's, it's condemned and you can't stay there anymore. I, I do agree. That's a gr great analogy for, for Europe. It's basically... A beautiful state of like one of the priceless carpets that you could possibly have, and it just has vomit stains all over it. I mean, that's a, that's actually probably the beautiful, the most accurate analogy that you could probably give of European society and culture. A beautiful priceless carpet with a with a huge vomit stain on it. It's, it's, Cigarette that burns. That is exactly and... what it is, and you're always sentimental, right? Everyone's sentimental for the carpet. But no one wants to get the, the the vomit stain out of it, right? It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you should you should hire a guy to come and clean it, and the guy that's hired to come and clean it is a Muslim, but 
you're you don't want to hire the Muslim because well you know you, you know we don't want a Muslim. Yeah, because because it's like we don't want the implication of a Muslim doing it, and it's all you know a, a whole bunch of neurosis. But but I mean okay, a cleaner uh, analogy would be you know your boiler is broken down. You need a new boiler. You can't keep that boiler because there won't be room for the new one if you keep the old one there. And and you're just saying, oh, but but it's still making a noise, and and every now and then it it hisses, and 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 the lights flash, and it's like, but yeah, but there's no hot heating, there's no hot water. Oh, but I don't care, you know. It's like, well, I mean, eventually the penny will drop, and you'll say, well, I can't do without heating and hot water, you know, for any longer. You know, too many people are complaining. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, but people did, are complaining and they don't want to Did you watch the Richard Spencer thingy? Did you watch the, the Richard Spencer, um, Richard Spencer with Ed Dutton and, um, and Keith Woods? Um, in... Oh, I didn't see this. What's this about? What are you speaking oh, of? Oh, you didn't see it. Uh, I mean, I, I thought, you know, I think lots of things are going to happen this year. So, so basically, Richard Spencer was, was talking about, well, perhaps we should consider the virtues of Islam. Perhaps Islam is, is um, the West's last hope. And, and blah, 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 blah. In fact, I was just um, doing the timestamps before, before we, we um, started streaming. So, so it's Well, that's all, interesting. All I mean, Richard Sp isn't Richard Spencer a uh, the white, white supremacist? Yeah, white nationalist, whatever. Yeah. yeah, him. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's like, uh, that's, that's, I mean, he's on a, I mean, so is, uh, is his followers going to take him out back and lynch him now? Or what, what's his problem? I don't know because um, Ed Dutton um, was was kind of um, I think he well he he calls himself an anthropologist doesn't he and and was kind of agreeing with him and he's written a book you know kind of um, talking up Islam so I I think um, you know things could get quite interesting and oh yeah and towards the end they they were saying yeah I, I uh, I've never had a a, um, a dialogue with a Muslim and then they they, they joked about uh, going to the temple of Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, that's not exactly orthodox Islam, but, you know, it's like they don't care because Farrakhan is, is known for his um, hatred of Jews, isn't he? Yeah, sure, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they, were, they were talking about, you know, going to his temple and enjoying a bean salad or something and um, whatever. Um, so, so they're not... You know, quite serious about it, um, but 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 um, I I think but but what one of my Facebook friends joked like you know, Richard Spencer he's been reading you hasn't he because lately he's been saying you know a, a lot of pro um, Islamic things so so um, you should send them an email you should you should um, you should send them an email and uh, tell them to get on the show discuss discuss these things with you yeah yeah. Um, I, I think I'll do that. I mean, it's worth a try, isn't it? So, um, I mean, the, the thing about the, these white nationalists is, is a few of them say, you know, we're not going to talk to you. You won't come on our shows, Claire. Blah, 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 blah. Your idea is silly. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and I thought... You, so you think the best hope... Do you think the the best is to, be, to have the... the what's it, the, the old saying, best of both worlds, basically being a white nationalist but also accepting Islam at the same time? Could that be a possibility for uh, the solution? Well, okay, this is how I see it going, you know, because uh, I've been trying to explain, you know, why secular Quranism is not really Islam. It's a legal system guaranteeing freedom of belief. And, and I'm just, you know, saying it's not a religion, so there will be no mosque of secular Quranism. It's just a legal system, which means that everybody just carries on going to whatever place of worship they used to go to, um, except that the laws will be different and sluts will be shamed and unmarried parents will be lashed a hundred times per illegitimate offspring. And, you know, these laws will, you know, change. But, but you know, as far as, you know, where you usually worship, just go to where you usually worship and th there won't be a problem. But, I mean, I suppose the problem with Christianity is that hardly anybody goes to church now. So, but, but you know, you know, if the ritual is more important to you than the actual content of, of what you're supposed to believe in, then I guess people will, will keep going to church. But I think the reason why, why, you know, so many Christians get so triggered about Judaism and Islam is because they sense that, you know, that they're the ones falling behind. 
um, in faith that they don't have any of the arguments and of course it's impossible to to win the argument when most people don't even believe in God it's like you know people already doubt the existence of God and you're saying oh no but you know not only do I believe in God I believe that Christ is him is God himself so it's like you're not going to win any arguments there you because you can't prove it you can't even prove the existence of God you know much less the, 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 you right. know, that that you know Christ is also God, so you know. But 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 we, I guess what I'm trying to say is is there were you know totalitarian laws forbidding um, Christians in Europe from even denying the Trinity because it's considered blasphemy to be to deny the existence of God and also blasphemy to deny that to de deny Christ's divinity and if you did you could be burnt at the stake as some people were like Michael Servetus in Geneva um, at the behest of John Calvin which which actually very few Christians know about but but you know it, it's quite shocking when you think about it because basically Michael Servetus said he denied the Trinity and um, refused to retract his denial and John Calvin um, yeah had him burnt at the stake which is pretty mean. No, I you know, I get you. I I put the uh, I put the email of his um, his email address out there in the the broadcast. I think everyone should email him and tell him to get you to do a show <laughs> with you, Claire. I think everyone. I'm I'm about to send an email to him actually right now. I'm saying you know Claire Carr. She does an awesome show. I think you know it, it would make sense for you to do a show with her. So basically, I'm gonna do a nice little, make it sound real nice, and um, and and get him out and get him out and get him on the show. Oh hopefully. wow, that that's really kind. Thank you, John. No problem. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I it would sound so much better coming from everyone else, you know, but me because it'd be just a you know pushy of me saying, you know, Richard, I'd like us to stream together, and then you'll probably run away and say no, no, no. But, but yeah, that would be great if we could do that. And, and yeah, right, I, I'm, I'm just trying to to say, you know, Tekla Quran isn't isn't that threatening. Nobody will be forced to be converted, um, except that your laws will be different. And um, but but then it it just means that more more men will be able to become married fathers, and their marriages will be more stable. And and then you know once once that stabilizes, everything else will stabilize eventually. But but currently, you know, yeah, a crazy bunch of people are in charge, and they don't know what they're doing, and that that's why you know everybody's getting angry and upset and scared. I mean, you're basically saying, you know, I mean, uh, for the for the Jew, it doesn't really matter because we live under we've been living under so many different uh, systems for so many thousands of years already it doesn't really matter what you call the system we uh, you can call it secular Quranism, you can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day. The Jew is just going to march on and believe in Torah anyway. So I, I commend you for what you're doing. Like, I, kn I know you're probably, this is probably harder than it should be. At the end of the day, it's probably a lot of the resistance that you get doesn't really make sense logically. Like, these people don't really have arguments against it. I mean, what Vincent says isn't necessarily true. I mean, I know I see he's out here in the comments section saying, I have to do more live streams to fight off the lies, but I mean, really, he's just, you know, it's, he has his own propaganda too. I mean, it's yeah. not exact. We're not, you know, say so. Yeah, because it it would restore the patriarchy, and 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 you know, we know that marriage is is, you know, um, allows for better parenting than you know unmarried parents and. And, and and then you you'll get a better quality next generation and 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 you know so so people don't forget who they are because they get very, very upset if they you know don't know where they came from they don't know if their parents have no religion and 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 or, or they you know they they were only in touch with one parent never met the other never got to know their family and this doesn't give them much of a sense of identity so I think you know that it, it it's that problem fundamentally which people don't want to uh, acknowledge, and of course you know all religions basically say you know don't don't have sex until you're married because you don't want to have babies before you are married, and 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 you know that kind of thing. 
and, and we, we kind of see have seen yeah. what, what 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 what's, what it's done to the West, you know, for for it, you know, ignoring those rules. That that's why you know people are you know you you get overwhelmed by immigration and then nobody will do anything about it because nobody cares about each other anymore, and blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, Vince wants to to get on because he he thinks we've lied about him and. Um, all right. Um, I, I guess. Ha have you? Um, I, I think his his beef is. is I can say for just a few more for okay. a few more minutes. The wife's home. The kids are home. Yeah, I she's like her. you know the kids are screaming and carrying on. So I can maybe stay on for maybe like maybe five ten more minutes before the noise gets really bad, and then <laughs> yeah, we'll finish. Up. Why don't Vincent comes on? We'll finish the conversation. We'll say I'll say my last point, and then that's it. I how's that? Okay. Okay, I, right. I I just sent him the link, and and I I think he, his problem is um what you said I think or maybe what I said, but yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, we have to remember that that Vince is gay. Okay, I just sent him the link, and and I I think he, his problem is um. It was well, like welcome to the room. Mm -hmm. How's it? Uh... You guys are stressing me out, stressing me out so much. First, John, a, a, a legal system that tells you you cannot practice idolatry and you cannot blaspheme God is not secular. Okay. That's not secular. No, no, can you, you just know, understand? You understand, understand, Vince, that, that that is the no height laws. So under secular, you know, if the Jews outsource the no hideization of Gentiles to Muslims, if they do that, then under secular Quranism, um, idolaters will be able to carry on. But we're not talking about secular Quranism. We're not talking about. Look, the the John, you have even said that each negative commandment has a positive command. The, on the noahide.org website, they say the positive command for no idolatry is is know the oneness of God or do not deny the oneness of God. But you can also know God. Do, you know the, the what they say on noahide.org is know God. That's not that's not secularism. I, I like I was saying before my I was going on like a rant and rave about how much I hate Noahides and, and learning with them. A lot of these Noahides don't have anything to do with religion and, and uh, or God at all. I mean, yeah, they might study the Bible and they might say, you know, they're Noahides, but at the end of the day, they go home and they don't pray, they don't do anything religious. I mean, a lot of them are secular. I mean, they, no, believe, they believe everything that you believe. Them. They believe yeah, in Hashem. Yeah, okay, they That's... believe in God, but they, they don't really, other than believing in God, there's nothing really, they believe in everything the world believes in. I know, but if, if people tell you that you're not allowed to believe in anything but Hashem, that's not secularism. But they believe in everything else. That's what I'm saying. That only if you just take away just your positive belief in God, a Noahide is everything the world is. They no, wear blue not. jeans. They wear baseball caps. They believe in evolution. They love yeah, but, hot dogs. They they eat pork. They do everything that you do except for believe in God. No, just That's because it. they just because they're not Jews doesn't mean that they're not religious. No, most Noahides I met aren't religious. That's what I'm trying to say. No, well, what does religious mean anyway? This is, this is your definition. See, the, you no, like what uh, this, the belief in God. If you believe in God, that's religion. That's, that's, religion means you believe in you do religious rites and rituals. No, that's and see, celebrate you guys, festivals. You guys, this is what you do. You you set the definitions in such a way that it's like uh, to say that believing in God is not religion, and it's only religion if you're doing rites and rituals. So you're telling all these people that simply believe in God that they're not religious. All these Christians that walk around who never pray, who never do anything, but in their head they believe in God, you're telling them they're not religious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're not, yeah, not really. You have John, to do that's things. A, that's you have really... to outwardly manifest your belief by observing some rituals or, you know, celebrating some festivals. Well, the positive manifestation is create courts of justice, so... Well, everybody's I got mean, courts they of justice not... now. It's like, well, you know, it's like I everybody's know, got... I know, but I mean, the... 
the point is that they're supposed to be doing that. At least they believe they're, they're supposed. So you're saying once they start up, up, setting up courts of justice, then they'll be religious? No, I'm saying that, that if you say you are a member of a religion, you have to do this thing that this particular religion is unique for. So if you want to become a Scientologist, you know, I, I don't know what they do that, that you know, maybe you, you set up stalls and, you know, sell books and... Well, you know. they promote they promote the Noahide laws, so they're commanded to promote them. So they are doing something and they are telling people to believe in Hashem. And they are giving them prohibitions. There's denim. There's all these sub laws that you're not allowed to be doing. Whether you know, there's tons of them, and they do no, have no, but, positive. But, but, but Vincent, you're, you're talking about Jews. Everybody knows what Jews are supposed no. to do. No, no, I'm not. I'm talking about Noahides. The Noahides are all negative commandments, except for the one to set up courts of justice, which are positive commandments. All of them, but they're with under these Noahide laws. Under the seven laws, there's sub laws. So there's a lot of laws that you need to be following. And it and and you're supposed like to be spreading like belief. What? I, I mean, you know, go to Noahide. Here, let's go to Noahide.org. Okay, but but you know whatever you can dig up, dig up. Um, John will say he was a Noahide for ages. They didn't really do anything except meet every Thursday for Bible study classes and and then go away. And it wasn't enough, you know, yeah, to, for, you, for, for his spiritual needs. That reading the Bible. This definition that coming to that's action coming together and reading the Bible together and encouraging other people to engage in this with you is religion. How when did reading scripture together and believing in God not be religion? When did that stop being religion? If I ask the common person on the street, hey, if you come together and you read the Bible and y'all believe in God, are you religious? And I said no, they would tell me I was fucking nuts. Look, these no hides only only meet every thursday for their bible study class it could be any kind of class it could be a french class it could be a no, they, class. no they, it's it could, a bible a, class yeah but the point is that they're, they're doing nothing that is specifically identifies them as a member of a religious group so 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 i guess when John yeah, was they abstain they uh, they purposely for because of the noahide laws abstain from uh, uh, they purposely only, okay, against entering the thought that there exists a deity except Hashem. So this is Noahide.org, and so they have these denim sub-laws. So th they purposely, they purposely entertain the thought that there exists no deity except Hashem. They purposely do not make graven images. That's an action to not allow yourself this to entertain the thought that there exists a deity except Hashem. Okay, on a technicality, yes, no hydism is officially a religion. Okay, I'm going to admit that. I'm saying it's not going to be enough for most people to just go and meet um, other people and, and study the Bible every week. They want something deeper, more spiritual and more ritualistic than that. Now, how do you know that that's what they well, want? Joel's Why are people told leaving me that it wasn't enough for him? You know, it's like, you know, he, he comes from a background of Catholicism, which is rich in ritual with their um, smells and bells and hocus pocus and whatever. So, you know, obviously, you know, from to go from that to 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 um, a, a class every Thursday is is going to leave him spiritually empty, which is why he felt he had to convert to Judaism. No, but that's dumb, but there obviously are these growing Noahides that don't feel spiritually empty. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, they're so rare. I mean, have you ever met one apart from John and he's only an ex Noahide? You well, I know them. I know them, them. online. Okay. I know them online. Oh, it, it oh, you must introduce look... them to me because I'd like. Claire, to... it's not. They haven't been pushing this all that long. They've gotten twenty thousand followers in what the past ten years. Yeah, I, it's I not have... like. What we Noahidism has been been popular since the, the late sixties. That was when Chabad really no, started pushing popular. it. No, it has been popular. No, the, the government of Israel hasn't been pushing it. You haven't had all these Noahide evangelists. The, I mean, back in the late 60s, there were hardly any Noahides. These 20,000 Noahides have popped up in the past 10, 15 years. That's only because of the, that's only because of the advert of the, the invention of the Internet. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the hardcore Noahide movement has been around since the late 60s. I know, but that I had fine. You're just trying to undermine the fact fine since the 60s, they've gained 20,000 followers.
I mean, 20,000 followers. Uh, yeah. Okay, 20,000 over, ocean yeah. When you compare them to, to 1.2 billion Muslims. I know, but you, but they want to, but you and the Jews together want to use Islam to spread Noahidism, which then is going to be declared not Noahide compliant. I've sent you all those emails from these rabbis who say, no, Islam's not Noahide compliant. There's at least a, uh, what's it called? Uh, a debate over whether it's Noahide compliant. So you want to do, you're saying let's use Islam to Noahidize the world. Mm -hmm. So if Islam is Noahidism, the spread of, the Jews would want that too, but they're not going to just, they're not going to leave Islam alone. They're not going to just say, okay, everyone become Muslim. The problem, with, no, the problem with that is that, that would be great if, if, if Muslims just spread Noahidism around the world like magic dust. That's great. Like that would be like wonderful. No, but the, no, problem not, is, no. the problem is they take out Jews with them, you know? No, that's not what they're Which saying. Which is why they're, Jews they're... are introducing Noahidism because, you know, it, 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 uh, Noahidism allows Jews to convert Gentiles but doesn't make them scary Muslims. Because, you know, they'll be controlled by, by, by well, Jews. Even, because look, religion that's even will be more appealing. Mm -hmm. That's even more appealing. There's people that like the non-idolatrous nature of Islam, but they don't want to become a scary Muslim. So is, a Noahidism is like... Islam light, like you always say. Why would people want Islam when they can have Islam light? Well, it depends on you know your personal preferences. So, so I'm saying um, secular Quranism is is Islam light. You, you can be anything. You can be Christian or Jewish, and and I'm just saying secular Quranism will make you a better Jew, a better Christian if that's what you want to be, and a better Buddhist and a Hindu as well as a better Muslim because it at least you know. Obeys the, the 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 laws of no hideism about no stealing, no eating bits of an animal and whatever, and and, and that would tend to um, advance civilization than than the thing you're trying to do. I mean, what are you trying to do, Vincent? I'm trying to prevent. I look. I'm not saying that Noahide law is going to be implemented tomorrow. This is a long term plan. I you know, but. I want to interrupt that plan and I want to show non-Jews real nature and intention of Judaism and what it's doing to spread that intention. I want people to wake up to what Judaism is, which the Noahide laws perfectly explain what Judaism is. Um, I don't want idolatry. I don't want non-idolatrous uh, sentiments to spread throughout the world. I don't want non... And just because I'm a homosexual, I mean, if I weren't a homosexual and my only issue with uh, the Noahide laws was uh, idolatry and blasphemy, you wouldn't be like, oh, he's just letting his personal preferences get in. You only use my... You use my homosexuality against me. Like, how, why is... How, isn't non-idolatry, non-blasphemy a personal preference? They're not letting your personal preference come in in your uh, 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 disdain for the Noahide laws? No, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying, if you want to choose... No. Sorry, no. I, I don't, I don't even understand your only... question. I don't, and you cut out, so I didn't understand your question. So if you want me to answer it, you have to ask me it again, and I didn't understand it the first time. You use my homosexuality against me and say that the only reason I, or one of the only reasons I'm against the Noahide laws is because of a personal preference. Well, well yeah, that, and, and, and also the fact that you're Hindu, which makes you an idolater. If I were heterosexual and... Then, then I'd use something else against you. <laughs> yeah, but any, I'm anti... <laughs> <Clear>. <laughs> Don't and take it personally, against the law. Vincent. I know, but anti to be against anti idolatry and to be against anti blasphemy is also a personal preference. Yeah, I think if you ask the average American whether or not a statue of Mary with a dead Jew on, on her lap with holes in his hands is, is an idol, they'd probably say yes. They probably would. And if you asked them, should we destroy it? Eh, they probably would be uh, up for that. They probably would go no, for you it. You think that most non-Jews in America would be up for destroying 
statues of Mary and call it idolatry? Yeah, sure. Look at I, I, I'm a big fan of Stephen Anderson. That guy's a a lunatic. He hate. I mean, he hates uh, the statues. He was doing a. I was watching one video of him, and he was he was talking about burning down Catholic churches. Wow, who's this Stephen Anderson? I never heard. Oh, of you'll him. you'll you'll love this guy. This guy's a a, a Protestant. He's a Protestant preacher. Wow, there's so much think craziness. That people, yeah. Are, I I, I, I think America a lot of want to like look at Noahides. Like I like I said, a lot of Noahides are ex-Catholics. And they get it. They understand that the statues are idolatrous. They understand that what goes on in the church is I, I, practices of idolatry. So if you ask them on, you know, without the mic being recorded, hey, what do you think about those statues? They probably say to you, yeah, take a take a golf car, uh, golf, take a baseball plat, a bat, and just break the statues. That's what they would say. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I used not, to be a Noahide. I used to be a Noahid. I used to hang out with these people. I know what these people think. That's what they think. And then they, they think just like the ISIS. American, not the common American. No. Destroying statues of Mary is not a common American it, belief. It's 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 trendy. I mean, I, I mean, of course, liberals are doing oh, it to no. like statues. Well, I mean, when liberals did... are doing it now to statues of like veteran, you know, uh, you know, Civil War veterans like Robert E. Lee and stuff. Like, like oh, they, they... No, it is a, a, a kind way, of In a way, it's idolatry because according to according to Judaism, you can't have statues of people. Right, you're not even allowed to make a great even. If... You, you lag and um, uh, you got to take the vibrator. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very bad. You got to take the vibrator out. out of your ass, Vincent. I can't hear you. Same here. Yeah, he keeps right. Up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Right. What John said is right. Technically, from what I understand, in Judaism, you're not even allowed to make statues of anything, even if it's not an idol. Yeah, because the, the danger. I you know I I don't agree with it because you know all uh, works of art are are statues or, or sculptures, so. Um, mm. And, and the thing is, you know, Muslims are, are are more liberal about idolatry because the Quran doesn't actually say kill kill idolaters. It's saying, you know, why why worship idols that can neither harm nor hurt you? So it it's it's kind of trying to reason with people and saying, you know, just worship God that you can't see, who created the universe and exists outside it. You know, blah blah blah. It's just like worship God in the correct way. Don't waste your time and energy worshiping things that you created yourself. For God's sakes, it's stupid. So, but you don't, you don't, you don't need a physical idol to be practicing idolatry. I mean, as soon as you yes, that, that's entertain true. the belief that there exists any other god besides the chef. No, but look, as soon as you, the, the rabbi said that the only way that you are allowed to so-called practice idolatry is if you're believing in your head. But as soon as you go so much as to verbally pray to this deity, even if you don't have a statue, as soon as you go to verbally pray to it, you are practicing idolatry. Yeah, yeah, which is why, and, and Muslims actually admit that you you can be guilty of inner idolatry, even if you're a Jew and a Muslim uh, praying correctly, because your inner thoughts, if you're thinking about yourself, it's like, I'm going to pray in this way to attract attention to myself so people will think I'm such a pious man and then I will be raised in status and then I will be chosen to be their leader. But, you know, the moment you even think like that, you're, you're guilty of inner idolatry. And, and so you, you can't be killed. You can't be killed for that kind of idolatry. Exactly. And they're saying, no, well, you know, you know, obviously, if, if, if any Jew and Muslim could be guilty of inner idolatry by by this nobody strain tell, of his thought, tell then that obviously practicing. they have no Nobody to kill anybody for for can tell you're practicing. Hmm. Sorry, you're you're cutting out again. Nobody can tell if you're practicing in right now. Exactly. Hold on, let me come back. Yeah, I think that's a great. I think that's the way it should be in Judaism. I think that's that's what the system is set up. Is that you can be whatever you want to be in your own body, in your own head, in your own home. <laughs> But there's a prescribed way of acting in society, right? Like, so society dictates 
what is the normative position as a whole, and that's you know what it means to be a Jew in a Jewish society. Like that's why in in the Jewish perspective, that's why you can have um, a belief that God is ten different aspects feminine and ten different aspects masculine. I mean, the, the, in Judaism, there's a belief in the Shekhinah, the feminine side of God, and then there's the Ayin Saf, which is the masculine, mm -hmm. the giver side of God, and then they come together into ten different, the ten Sufriot come together and and you know this is they think this is what kabbalists think this is this is this is she tooth this is i uh, you know craziness but at the end of the day the kabbalists will go to the shul and then say oh i believe in one god and pray to one god okay so maybe he studies and thinks things differently but in his actions so i guess in a way i guess what i'm trying to say is judaism kind of lets you to be a hypocrite if it's just being a hypocrite in your own mind you know if you, you can't practice hypocrisy but i guess you can think it i i suppose or you know it's like you know maybe it's just something that that we all fall into because i'm sure we've all been hypocritical at some stage in our lives except you know that it's 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 better to know what it is and and to be able to identify it than than not to know what it is and and not care that we're guilty of it so so um yeah it, so so even if the if we're talking about these things that everybody falls into, at least you know we're, we're more forgiving of it because we ourselves do it inadvertently. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's where Vincent is getting hung up on. I think he say I think he can't um, differentiate between the two. He's he's sort of just lumping the two together. And I like hey, Vincent. Hey. I I like him. Hey, welcome back. What's up? <sighs> Um, can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes. Yeah, you're coming in all right. Yeah. Okay. I just used my other. I used my other computer. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, you sound much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, my 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 assertion is not that tomorrow. I'm not even saying necessarily Jews themselves are going to be carrying out this Noahide, but they are. If you are promoting Noahidism amongst the Gentiles, the command is to set up courts of justice and to kill. So whenever that's going to happen i'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow but that's the plan I, i'll you know what if that plan ever comes through in my lifetime i make an oath here i swear before you know two witnesses claire and yourself and every and the millions of uh, claire's audience that if if anyone's to be executed for, for this in a Noahide court, I, you know what? I'll I'll speak out against it. How's that? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, me how's too. That? Me too. I mean, I mean, you know, it's it's a remote possibility. So so you know. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's going to happen in our lifetime. But even just, I mean, look, I mean, I we caught it early. I caught it early. I mean, I don't think that they were. Expecting so it's the year 2020. I'm 30 years old. I, my lifetime. I'm if I'm lucky, I might live another 30 years. So 2050, you're saying Noahidism won't be implemented until what after 2050? I don't know when it would be implemented. I don't think it's going to be impl. I don't know. I have no idea. It would depend. I mean, it would depend on on a lot of things. It's in a official dumb so they have it officially recognized um um how long would it take to build up this fervor would they be able to get islam to work for them um how many christians would they be able to fool and deceive the vatican i don't know i i really don't know i mean it is more in theory but just i mean break it now break it now and just even just just expose the the intentions of don't Jews. most christians already think the vatican's already the the cynic uh, you know the you know uh, uh, an evil satan uh, entity anyway so they're not going to believe anything the vatican says right no but the vatican has there's a lot of catholics too aren't there a billion catholics so you think a lot of Catholics are going to jump on the whole Noahide thing you know just give up your statue of virgin mary and jesus with the holes in his hands I think that the Vatican could slowly weed those things out over time. But they've been, I mean, they, they invented it. Why would they give up something that they, they, they invented? I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess they could. I mean, they just recently give up the idea of purgatory, didn't they? Didn't they just come out and say people don't, dead babies don't go to purgatory anymore? So they do change their mind quite a bit. So I guess maybe. You know. So where do dead babies go to? 
So the, it Straight used to, to be a Catholic position that if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you go to hell. And so Unbaptized the Catholic Church babies go to purgatory, right? So the Catholic Church invented this place called purgatory because babies didn't have a chance to accept Christ. So how could you be condemned for something? So purgatory is just this like limbo that you're in. Pending, pending. Pen, pen, kind of pending well, not tray. no, not pending. That's that's uh, that's Sheol. That's uh, that's the waiting room. That's um, that's a different place. Purgatory is like literally li limbo. It's literally you're not in heaven and you're not in hell. You're literally stuck between worlds that i mean this is what they believe anyway but yeah. now they changed it they say babies go to heaven now so we're lucky that the catholics changed their mind yeah i mean i mean that, that was really a device to make parents have their children their infants baptized you know in case that the infants died in infancy so i get i guess people had to pay the priest to baptize the thing and you know yeah, I, I think I think it's difficult, but I think it's possible. And I think, you know, Vincent is right to be hysterical in, in this way. Like you're if you're saying that somehow the Jewish people are going to manipulate, you know, world religions into believing in a Jewish perspective of their religion. I mean, that's something to be worried about. I mean, but then you have to demonstrate to me that, you know, the Catholic Church is being manip manipulated. I mean. I mean, no, they, they accepted the Noahide laws because that's what they want to do, right? Is are the are the rabbis really pushing the Catholic Church? No, they didn't come. They didn't just like stumble. Or, yeah, they signed it with rabbis. I mean, it was in conjunction with rabbis, and the Catholic Church didn't just out of nowhere say let's let's recognize the Noahide laws. I mean, obviously, it was Jews who were telling them about it. Jews were there when they signed it. So they got a bunch of token Jews to go along with it. Like, who are these rabbis? Do, do they have any? So my question is, do these rabbis have any sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, halachic authority to make rulings such as this? I mean, who? I mean, are are these rabbis that sit on the bet thing in Israel right now, or are these just, are these it just didn't, like? It didn't say Catholicism is Noahide. It just said that the Noahide laws are incumbent upon all humanity and supersede. Uh, individual freedoms they didn't necessarily oh okay they didn't necessarily say so they're not they're not necessarily making a ruling whether or not catholicism is a no-eyed religion just that's just the catholics are acknowledging the pope at least is acknowledging that yeah there's this such thing as a no high law and you're, you're supposed to as technically as a goy adhere to it that's basically what you're saying yeah it's all right, so they just so there's this lip service. It is so they just it's, this is lip service. Why am I supposed to be afraid of lip service? I didn't necessarily you need said you need to be afraid of lip service right now. But if this was turned on its head, Jews would just never accept it, even if it was only in theory. So I don't. I get very angry when you seem to just imply that the non-Jews, if they're upset with the theory and they're upset that these things are being recognized that we're being alarmist i mean the the what's it called the jewish organization was it the adl or some other uh jewish organization joined in repealing the national day of prayer because it only mentioned praying in a church they said well it doesn't say mosque synagogue temple it didn't say everything so we don't want it there and they got it repealed and the same thing with this i mean a to say the Noahide laws are the foundation of American civilization, it's our responsibility to educate the population, and our president will sign an international scroll pledging to use education and charity to return the world to the Noahide laws, and the Noahide laws demand the decapitation of Christians and pagans and homosexuals and all of this. I mean, the idea that anyone wants this repealed in the U.S. government and the U.N. and the Vatican and Freemasonry, like... The Jews are going to come to us and say, "What's your big deal? How dare you?" Well, okay, so you did, so the ADL is actually in in in, in uh, uh, you know going heads with Chabad because Chabad is the one that established the day of prayer. So they're, when they're going the ADL, antithetical. When did huh? the ADL, when did the uh, no Chabad didn't establish day of prayer? It only said church. It didn't say. Did it, no. Wait a minute! You just said to me, didn't you just say the ADL was fighting to remove the day of prayer or something? I don't know if it, you're you're mixing up you're mixing up uh, day of prayer and education day. Oh, okay. I'm, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, you're 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 mixing it up. Some Jewish organization 
uh, joined and it might not have been the ADL. It was a Jewish organization though, but they wouldn't tolerate it. That, so I mean, what that's is this the, day of prayer thing? I, 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 this is the first I've heard of it. Day of, day of, day of prayer. It got repealed. Let me look it up. It was something that Chabad pushed for. The Rebbe, um, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, was very big on Education Day, Prayer Day. I mean, he, I mean, he was pushing for all of these things. He supported all of these movements. Okay, I actually I need to go right now because I'm getting an important phone call. But I'll come back if Claire is still on. Okay. All right. All right. Hello. Pop, popular man. He's a he's a big mocker, as they say in Yiddish. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so what's the? I mean, what's the? To wrap it all up, put a nice little bow on it. What's the verdict? What what are we? I mean, Vincent is obviously saying that we should be paranoid and his, and hysterical. I mean, because the Jews are coming to behead the goyim, right? I mean, that, so, that, that's basically his line. That that you know, the, the, they're going to know how nice the world, and then they're going to behead all the idolaters. That, that that is the worst case scenario. I, I I'll I'll be honest with you. It'd be nice if the Jews actually got a, a backbone and actually stood up for their principles and, and their religion and actually believed in all this. Stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, the Jews are not gonna, uh, you know, go on a rampage and start implementing Judaism everywhere. I mean, it's nice maybe. But at the end of the day, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the whole thing is like, you know, I, I, I keep telling people, it's like, you know, if Jews are the chosen people, they can't make the whole world, wide world the chosen people because then they wouldn't be chosen anymore. You know, it's like, you know, if you are the aristocracy, you can't just say, oh, come on, everybody, you peasant, you merchant, you trader, come and join us because, and become our aristocracy because then nobody would be anyone anymore. So, you know, in the self-interest of the, the Jew, they, you know, a Jew wouldn't want everybody to become Jewish, is is kind of, you know, my, my reasoning anyway. It's like, well, you're an exclusive social club. You, you don't want anybody to join you. I mean, uh, uh, but, but Islam is different because it's saying everybody join us because we are a universal religion and everyone is welcome. But then, you know, Islam works in a different way and defines itself in a quite different way. You know, and, and, and Christians are, Christianity is also a universal religion because he's saying you, you just have to believe that, that um, Christ is, is also God and you're one of us, so come, you know, come on over. Well, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a, a, a discussion for another day about mm -hmm. whether or not the world should be Jewish. I mean, I'm under the, I mean, I don't agree that um, Judaism is exclusive to um blooded you know born jews i mean i obviously converted oh yeah, yeah but I, i'm saying of course conversion is is possible and 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 you know so but but i'm saying you know they make right, it hard they make it hard like, for you to convert well well islam it's like you you say the shahada and you're one of us and and, and for christians it, it's an easier process to get into the the group if you know what i mean Right. I, I mean, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Like, not everyone can be a Marine, right? Not everyone can be the best of the best. And that, that's why I think that if you wrap it up full circle, that's why Jews are held to a high standard, mm -hmm. because Jews should know better, right? Jews should know, you know, what idolatry, idolatry is, what blasphemy is, what all these laws are. That's why we're held to a higher standard. We, exactly. we are put, we are put to the ring. Go ahead. What were we going to say? You know, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that, that you know, the, the same penalty that would apply to Jew doesn't even apply to Gentiles because, you know, it, it's, it's this idea that once you become a Jew, you, you have to um, subscribe to higher standards. And this means um, getting more punished than, 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 you know, a Gentile would for, for doing the same thing. I, yeah, isn't definitely. That the idea? Yeah. Isn't that the idea? Well, yes. I mean, technically, a non-Jew is not punished. I mean, it depends, right? I mean, a non-Jew that violates a Jewish person's rights is punished severely. Like, a, a non-Jew is not even allowed to put a finger on a Jew. Like, technically, he's put, put to death. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, but th th that's different because it's, it's like, you know, to reinforce the idea that the Jew is, you know, higher than the Gentile. I get all that. So... Um, but, but, you know, like certain things, you know, have to be punished, you know, in a Gentile, in the same way for Jews, you know, idolatry means death penalty. 
but you know for 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 other things it's like well you're, you're a gentile you don't have to observe the sabbath in fact you know you're not supposed to because that that's one of the laws as well it's like you know, you, you know the jew is supposed to trick the gentile into breaking the sabbath in some way uh, because they don't want to copycat them in in that way so yeah, I know it's it's a bit complicated, but but the whole point of of th this sort of thing is is that the, the you know the Jews are, are basically saying yeah we're we're, we're higher than you and th that's why you know we have to do all these things to 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 reinforce the message basically because even the no high laws are, are 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 saying you know that that's your minimum standard you know as long as you do that you're okay but we have to do even more than that. I appreciate I, repre I appreciate the uh, discussion, Claire. I'm gonna get going here. All right. it's, it's, uh, so, so, thank you. We had we had a great discussion. I thought it was a great little uh, a great little uh, in whatever this was. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, and um, I I love it that I I never know what I'm gonna say and I never know what you're gonna say and we we, we get to say it. Uh, All right. So my so my final position is choose Judaism. Choose choose Judaism. Thank you. Take care, Claire. All right. Thank you. Take care. And I'll look at the chat. Uh, just talking about your stuff, Ali S and Amanda. Um, okay, I'll I'll turn it off then. <laughs>